Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the big hangar here at the new hangar in London. Uh, we're going to talk about Electroair's electronic ignition systems this morning. It's a certified system for four and six cylinder aircraft. Uh, and right now, it's the only certified system for electronic ignition systems, and we're going to talk a little bit about them. I brought uh, a sample system with me. It's going to be installed in my airplane in a couple of days, so I've got everything in the box except for the uh, hardware kits. Uh, so we can do a little show and tell, show you what all the pieces are. But basically what it does is it replaces your magneto. Uh, most people choose to replace the right magneto. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what it provides you during starting, the controller head of the electronic ignition system knows the rotational speed of the engine. So at starting speeds, it's firing at top dead center just like an impulse coupled mag. So that your NS is starting on both mags. It's starting on the left impulse coupled mag firing with the impulse couple and the electronic ignition system. Now, the difference between the two, uh, Magneto produces at optimum a 12,000 volt spark. Usually during starting, it can be anywhere between 6 to 8,000, depending upon the age of your mag. The electronic system starts off at 70,000 volts. It's a much hotter spark uh, as opposed to that. It's also a much longer duration. It's four or five times of duration of a normal spark. And when we installed our first system many years ago, um, I've been doing this now for over five years, and uh, with the like Lexo Air. When we did the first one, we after we had it all hooked up, we pulled the spark plugs out of all the cylinders and we hooked up on top of the engine, one plug being fired electronically, one being fired by the magneto, turned out the lights in the hangar and cranked the engine. What we saw was the little blue pink magneto spark about a millisecond going tick, 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 and we saw a bright blue pipe cleaner hanging in midair on the uh, other spark plug. Now that 70,000 volts does cause a couple of problems for you if you try to do spark plugs. My bag of chips here. They have a number of solutions on the spark plug. Now, the one I'm holding up here is a typical uh, UREM Tempest 37 BY. Cap is set at 16,000, which is about optimum for magnetos. This is the EARM 37HE high energy, and it's a 37 BY by Tempest that's been gapped to 36,000. So it's real important when you install an ignition system that you don't get the spark plugs mixed up. Because if you read the literature, and I always recommend that everybody read the instruction manual, because it does call out a couple of important things. And one is, it calls out not using normal massive electrode plugs on the electronic ignition. So when we were installing our first one, we read that, but we didn't buy any of the high energy plugs. So we just grabbed four scrap spark plugs, threw them in the cylinder, started the airplane, it ran great on the mag, and we the electronic had died. We pulled the plugs out, put them on an meter. they were all wide open, and blown the resistors clear apart inside the plugs. So, being engineers, we thought maybe those were just four defective plugs, so we tried it again. After destroying three more plugs, one managed to survive for a little while, we decided to go get the correct plugs, gap them appropriately, and put it back in, and it's been flawless ever since. So that's the one caveat. So the way we normally go about installing the ignition system is the first thing we do is we go find out what bag we're going to replace. And again, most people end up replacing the, uh, the right magneto, leaving the left impulse mag uh, for their starts. The electronic ignition, again, knows where it's at in the rotation cycle, so it fires at top dead center. So as part of the process we do is the first thing we do is we take the right mag out of the engine, and then we install the mag timing head. Uh, you'll have to take the gear off your magneto and put on here, but this is pinned just like a magneto. There's a timing hole. You line it all up. Unlike a magneto where you time at 25 before top dead center, you time this at zero mm -hmm. for the engine. It's zero, and then the controller figures out everything else for you. The next thing we normally do is, having removed the right magneto, we gather all the, the, the entire harness from the right magneto. So we remove it completely out of the airplane, remove the plugs out with it, and then we begin the process of taking all the, uh, as you know when you're reciprocating engines, a magneto fires one side lower plugs, one side upper plugs, and the other mag does the other way. So what we end up doing is we gather all the spark plug leads from the left mag and put them on the top cylinders, on the top. That way your magneto is firing the easier plugs. We're going to let the electronic ignition fire the dirty, oily plugs in the bottom of 70,000 volts. It's got enough sufficient power uh, just to zap it out of there. So, so after we've done that, then we go ahead and we make up the, now we're at the point where we're trying to figure it out. We've got the mag in, we know where the spark plugs are going to go. So the next, the next part that goes in is the coil pack. 
very similar to your coil packs you see in cars, produces 70,000 volts, and it also does what's called a waste spark. Now, um, Aviation Consumer in their May, the May edition just did an article about electroware, and they got a couple things wrong. They said that the wasted spark was because by the time the magneto fires and crews, the electronic ignition system's already gone off 20 degrees earlier. It's burned all the fuel, so it's a wasted spark on the magneto. Wasted spark actually applies to the fact that every time the piston on the electronic side comes to top dead center, power stroke and exhaust stroke, it fires the spark plug. It makes for an easier controller design. And the second part, during the exhaust gas evacuation, it makes sure there are no deposits on the spark plugs that blows them right off, anything that might stick there during the exhaust cycle. So the next thing becomes mounting the coil pack. And there's a wide variety of options for the coil pack. Firewall is good, motor mount is good. Some places are not going to vibrate, but that allows you access to all the spark plugs. Um, I The spark plug wires, uh, if those of you who own Corvettes might recognize Corvette wires. And it's not just because they're red. Um, they're high energy wires, they're like 5,000 ohms per foot. And these are the preferred, and what you end up doing with the wires is you end up cutting these, and then putting the ends on to go on the spark plugs, the aviation connectors. And then you have your coil pack wired, you now have your mag timing head in, and now you're ready to pierce the firewall for the cable, for the harness that holds it all together. Looks like this. It's got, everything's all bated together, just clicks together. So once we do the firewall side, then we're ready to go into the cabin. And there's a couple things we have to do in the cabin. We need a 10 amp circuit, whether it's 12 or 24 volts, to drive the coil pack. That's wired to the master, so as soon as the master's on, coil pack is energized. And then you also have the controller box itself, which takes two amps, and they have to be on separate circuits. They can't be daisy chained together. And that provides everything the electronic commission needs to know where it's at. The, the control box, when you get it, it comes with a big yellow placard letting you know that this one is set for an engine good for 25 degrees. So if I'm putting this on most of my like homing engines, I would do this. Um, if you've got a 182Q, 182, it would be 24 degrees. Whatever your engine requires is what they've set this. Uh, they'll send you the correct controller, and you are to verify it when you get it. So that gets wired in the cockpit. It weighs about a half a pound. Uh, it can be zip tied to a wiring bun or you can mount it on the firewall, just someplace out of the way. But it has to go inside the cabin. This is not a firewall component. Most of the problems that they experience with Electroware are installation issues. Um, I did my first one in April of 2013. I did 11 last year. I've done two already this year uh, in a variety of airplanes. And Every time I've had a problem, the two times that we've actually had a quick work when we put it out the box, we found a wiring error, or we were using a customer provided switch, and we found the contacts on the switch were grounding. That's why the breaker was popping and we weren't getting 12 volts in the controller. Once we fixed all those problems, they work really well. The, the one other component on the system, probably one of the most critical, is the magnetic, uh, the, the map sensor. So this hooks into your manifold line. So if you've got a normal fixed pitch prop, you probably don't have manifold pressure. So we tap into one of the cylinder ports, run the lines, do the bulkheads into the cabin, and we hook it all up so that we get manifold pressure. Now what this allows the controller to do is you'll notice right off the bat when you start, you'll have a much smoother idle. And it's usually 50 to 100 RPMs higher than the engine was set for with a, with a magneto. So you end up turning down your idle speed a little bit. But at altitude, uh, when you're taking off and when you're at altitude using uh, cruise power, the controller will enhance the spark up to 15 degrees above where the mag is so that the wave front is striking the piston in that optimum 11 to 17 degrees path top dead center for maximum push down for transfer of power. So that's what the map sensor does. So if your map sensor goes out or you don't hook it up, then you're stuck at whatever the timing is on the controller. It will only advance up to 25. This way it can go to 40 or 45, depending upon the needs of the engine. It's a very conservative cu uh, curve that they program in their custom algorithm so you don't have any chance of detonation or anything like that with the engine. Now, other than easier starts and smoother idle, there's a couple of the, the big thing that people use this for is hot starts. And the 182s that are notorious for being hot and, being, and you just about run your battery down trying to crank them, 
becomes a non-event with electronic ignition. Most of the airplanes start second blade. Because the first time that compression goes off uh, in 70,000 volts fire, the engine's pretty much running. The Oh, the other big advantage that people like it is the fuel savings. So here's what you can expect, and these are numbers that we've been gathering over the last five years. If you're running a six-cylinder, whether it's a Continental or whether it's a Lycone, in the sixes of the 0540s, you can expect to save about two gallons an hour. You'll be able to lean much more aggressively. As a matter of fact, you'll be able to lean way aggressively than you should for your engine. A gentleman just installed one on a Tiger. If you've got an 0360 engine, whether like owning or cotton oil, you're saving about a gallon and a quarter an hour, about 1.25 gallons. Um, in the 0320s, it's right at about a gallon. Now, when I talk about leaning, there was a gentleman with a Tiger who took his up to 11.5, and he leaned it out to 5.5 gallons an hour. Engine was perfectly smooth, making full 2,700 RPM. That's a little too lean. So we try to tell people that when you are flying the electronic ignition initially, about, depending on what engine you have, don't lean it too aggressively because it will continue to run. On that particular airplane, though, he did tell me that the problem was that when he went to shut down by pulling the mixture all the way back, the engine wouldn't die. It would spool down to like 100 RPM and fire, and then spool back up to 2300, die back down again, fire, and just repeat that cycle until they shut off the electronic ignition system. It will fire a very, very lean mixture. So you can get some good fuel savings out of that, but you don't want to get into a detonation range. So the other thing about the electronic ignition system is they don't require magneto checkups. You put them on your airplane, they're good to TBO. The only part that has to be replaced to TBO is the mag timing head. Now, in the five years that I've been installing these, we've had two failures. Uh, we had the magnetic sensor which is this little device right here in the mag timing head. The little magnetic pickup on the timing wheel went out. Went out at 33 hours. Uh, electrical air, the customer brought me the, air, uh, the airplane, the electrical air overnighted the part we put it in the airplane. The customer flew out. The only other part that we've replaced over the years, and it's part of ICAS, is the ignition wires. The ignition wires in the airplane are good for 1,000 hours for five years ever comes first. So five year timing and we had the seven for five years they were timing out. The symptomology of that will be bless you, will be um, a high altitude miss. And so the spark plug wires are uh, working. Replace the wires and we're fine. We did have one set of the old wires that got a lot the fire department. It's a hot tub. So uh, they did have one set of wires, uh, which is why they changed over from the previous set of wires. A customer with 54 hours started picking up a miss, and it was only on the electronic side. He brought it to me, we troubleshot it down to the wires, we checked all the spark plugs, called Electroware. They flew down, had a guy come in this way, and we brought us a set of wires. We put them on the airplane. This is gone. So that's the two warranty issues that I've seen over the last five years. Uh, very good warranty service from Electroware. Uh, that's the major high points, but I'm sure a lot of people not, not, not having seen electronic ignition systems before you probably have a lot of questions. So, if you don't mind talking over the fire department, I'll take the questions. Here's one for you. Uh, I'm running five wire spark plugs right now. Yes. Those would surely be trashed by the system. Now, they also have the same resistor, I'm guessing, as they stand back here. Right. So, I need to change the score by five wire. Oh, no, no, they have a full solution of spark plugs. You can have the 37B Y style plugs. You can have the 40, the 37, 38 E style massive electrode. They're just gapped differently, and they also have a fine a fire water solution. Well, I asked that question because of 70,000 volts. I would imagine that the masses will have erosion even at a faster rate. They can go even standard. Right, and then the ICAS on the spark plugs. The spark plugs are good for 500 hours. Now there are some people who like them. Some people like the reach of the 37BY. If you have a look at them in the profile of a cylinder uh, top, they stick further in there and you don't get as much of that on. But 
but you're not going to find as much lead on, on these as uh, a normal magneto because of the voltage and the complete combustion process. A couple of things uh, on complete combustion. The whole idea of electronic ignition was to try and burn all the fuel in the cylinder. So naturally, you would probably see anywhere from a two to three degree rise in your cylinder head temperature because you're burning more of the energy in the cylinder. The good news is that for like homing engines that have the bow uh, guide wear, uh, especially if you have a power flow system, it kind of halts the operation because by the time the valve opens, in a normal airplane with an ideal fire ignition, when the valve opens, your EGTs are up there because you're actually pulling out burning fuel plasma. And it's running over the valve, it's running over the valve seat, transferring a tremendous amount. It's like water at 212 and steam at 212. It's a lot more energy than steam. Well, by the time the valve opens on the electronic ignition system firing, about 95% of the fuel is burned. And so when you open the valve, you're basically pulling out hot air, not burning fuel plasma. So you don't transfer as much load to the exhaust valve. And so for people with power flow who have the electronic ignition, it's pretty much arrested the valve back there because you're just bringing out hot air, not burning fuel plasma. So you will see your EGTs go down, which is what you would expect. Um, does it also tend to, for carbureted engines, make the uh, EGTs more even? Uh, yes. In terms of, so in other words, a carbureted engine can be lean, maybe you can lean a peak with this, but you couldn't do it in a so Right. Uh, you can go lean a peak with this. You, like I say, you can actually lean it almost into a dangerous zone of the engine. You wouldn't want to go more than, like on a six cylinder, I'd be really very going more than two and a half or three gallons an hour fuel savings. Well, how do you lean there? The old way, you lean it. What's going to happen in cruise is you're going to see is you're going to lean to rough, lean to rough, lean to rough, and all of a sudden, whoa. So, we lean by fuel flow. What if you don't have fuel Well, you're going to have to do a real good calculation. <laughs> you're going to have to get a feel for it. Okay. So, so, for mine, I can right now lean. Maybe to seven and a half now, less than that, and cruise it out to. And what kind of engine are you going to go to? Go to a 20B2J. Oh, yeah, you'll be able to lean. Um, is that the high, maybe half of one piston? 100 horsepower, so yeah, it's a high pressure. Yeah, eight and a half. So you'll probably be able to lean. You'll probably be able to save about a gallon, quarter, an hour over the high compression. So you can probably get it down into the probably 6.5 an hour. What's the cost? Uh, the system itself sells for, come to the box, is uh, $3,570. Now, they do occasionally have sales, uh, they're not 10% off. The spark plugs, depending on what kind you get, the 37 BYs, the four of them are $161, which makes them $40.25 each. The fine wires are $81, and the massives are probably about the same price as the fine wires, having as the uh, 37 BYs. There's rate insurance of about $100, and then most shops will quote you 20 to 24 hours for the install, uh, which is what Bob Lecturer recommends for the first time install. That's about what we spent on our first one, but for aircraft that we've done a lot, like the Grubbin line, we can run through that airplane anywhere for 10 to 14 hours and be done. Uh, now, for additional questions on, and if you'd like to see some of this stuff in action, um, Grumman Pilots uh, has a YouTube channel called Grumman Pilots, and they have a playlist called Electronic Ignition, and in there are 16 videos all about the Electroware EIS 41,000s and 61,000s, four and six cylinders. We talk about all the components, their videos of how the components go together, how to make up the spark plug ends. So they've got a lot of good videos out there on the, on the electronic ignition systems. And this talk, if it passes editing, it will show up as well. So there's a lot of information. The, uh, everybody who's an installation center for electroware has gone through rigorous training, so they know the system inside and out. They know how to troubleshoot it. Uh, there is a quite extensive troubleshooting document that comes with the system. When you order it, I mean, everything comes with a memory stick today, so your installation manual, your AML, your aircraft, your uh, pilot manual, STC paperwork, troubleshooting guide, and a ton of, ton of other information are all on the stick. As a matter of fact, they're going to be
be going to a larger stick and then we start putting videos of installation on the stick. So that's coming down the road. Uh, the company's up in Michigan, a uh, small little facility. Uh, they do a really good job. Everything is queuing twice up there. So the harness has been checked twice. And as I say, in the five years we've been doing the system, we've never had a component come in the box that was not working. We've installed every system. The only problems we've had have been our own installation errors. And 98% of all the trouble that are in the fleet are people who did not read the installation manual. And they get calls at the either the installation center, they'll call a fleet power distributor down in Texas, or they'll call the company and go, um, it's not working. It says it's uh, getting a thermal. Well, if you mount the controller and the manifold pressure near the exhaust system on the firewall side, uh, it's going to be out of gear. That's why it has to be on the cabin side. Like I say, most of the problems that people have found in the field with initial installation were installation errors. Once we try to shot it, we get everything in the right place and it works just fine. So, um, my only thing is, I like it because it's a nice product for the airplanes. Like I said, I've got one for my aircraft I want to install this week. Uh, it changes the operating characteristics of the airplane, smooth the stars, better climbs, and the nice thing is high altitude performance. Airplanes that couldn't get over 13.5 before can now go almost 18,000 feet. And they don't go past 18,000 because most of them don't carry the high altitude charts. So. Okay. Other questions? System. One of the changes that's coming in the next gen is going to be to combine the controller box and the manifold box into one box. So you don't have two separate boxes. It just be one box you hook up. Um, I don't know how they're doing on the internal generator, and I know they're working on that with the dual bin solution, which is, you know, for the a lot of my companies, you've got one shaft, you've got two magnetos, and they're working on that to be able to put some of the magnetos with the tri condition system for like the uh, IO 360 P1 okay, I would guess that once you get the internal generator solution, then the FAA is going to allow you to use both bags for even greater savings. Correct. Now the Surefire mags, which are talked about, Surefly mags, which are talked about in the article, they've been talking about being certified now. They were talking last year before Oshkosh. They're hoping to have certification this year. Their original design had a generator inside um, what they call the SEM. There's spinning generator inside, which they've now taken out. Yeah. They were going for the dual mag solution, now they're just going for the simpler mag, electronically fired, so again, you'll have one mag on the engine, and when they get certified, you'll have one of their electronics. However, they tend to use the same ignition harness as a magneto, which means they're limited to 18,000 volts as a maximum voltage, which is where your magneto harnesses start to break down. Apparently, some of them have, uh, have an internal sensing switch that electronically can detect you have adequate alternator power, in which case you use that, and then it turns on the internal generator with the failure. Okay. So, but again, you may be right, you may not be able to get the same kind of voltage out of that. And right. I, I'm guessing that the internal alternator probably cannot create a 70,000 volt spark, it's just too small. Right, and what, uh, what Surefly did, it, they did a redesign just this last year. Uh, I was talking to one of their engineers, because what they had was, they had a unit that was their 20 degree advance, they're 22, they're 23, they're 24, they're 25, they're 27. And they decided to consolidate that design and put in a dip switch under a cover. So you can have one mag, one module, open it up, set it to whatever you need. It means certification, so each unit doesn't have to be certified, they're going for the one common solution. And again, like I say, the article says they're, they're, they're working really hard for Oshkosh, but that's the same thing they said last year. So it'd be nice to see what happens when you have some competition in the marketplace. Yeah, on every system that I've installed up, 
uh, I run a shop out of Butler County Regional uh, Hogan Field, uh, Yankee Aviation. And we have installed, like I said, last year 11 and two this year. And every one I've done in recent years, uh, I, every customer, I said, now if you don't like it, bring it back. We'll take it out of your airplane. So when we disable, we take the right mag out, we just take the uh, mag grounding leads and we wrap them back into a harness and leave them there in case you ever want to go back to a magneto. We don't pull the wiring out. And I've offered every one of the people I've installed, if you don't like it, bring it back and I'll buy it back from you. And I'll just send it back to Electroair. Uh, I've had no takers. Uh, Joe Campbell, probably the uh, one of my more interesting customers. Let me just describe him as that. When he wrote an article on the Grumman Gang uh, about the unit, he goes, I, he goes, I get fuel savings, I get easier starts, which are a plus. Plus, it makes me look sexy as hell when I'm flying the airplane. So that's what he said about the electronic ignition. So once again, what would be the installation time for, say, 172 pop-up? If you go to somebody who's done them before, probably somewhere around 14 to 18 hours. Um, I did one for, for Ron in their 182Q. I was right at 20 hours, at the lower limit, but I'd never done a 182Q before, so I was having to figure out where your main power bus systems are. Uh, the quickest I've ever done in a Grumman, had, in a Grumman Tiger was roughly about 10 hours. Thank you. The biggest thing is just take your time. Are you a sales? No, I, no, I, I have nothing to do with electro air other than... No, 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 no. electro air, but okay. Grumman pilots, I mean, is there a, an eight, uh, Hamilton there? Maintenance shop? I have a maintenance shop, oh. yeah. And I work on primarily Grumman's, but I have worked on Moonies and Cessnas and, and other installs. But primarily my business is uh, Grumman's. I'm one of, like, one of the four or five Grumman shops in the country. Okay. And so I have customers that live in Oregon. I have customers that live in Florida. And I have customers that come in from, from New England. Okay. And they're in clients. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bill used to be a big Grumman guy. There used to be quite the Grumman group here at Lincoln ago back yeah. where the tea, where the old tea hangers were there was the old cat house <laughs> yep so so I brought some literature from the company it's all up here uh, take whatever you want in terms of the literature uh, call them up ask them any question it's a great system like I say I've installed a bunch of them everybody enjoys them it makes the airplane so much nicer to fly one of the things that I do um, when I fly a customer's airplane uh, bring, like a lot of times uh, customers will, I'll go pick up the airplane up, I'll do the annual, I'll do the install, I deliver the airplane back. Um, when I'm flying the airplane back with electronic ignition, once I get up to cruise altitude, I usually reach over and I turn off the magneto. And if you look at the digital tachometer, I don't lose a single RPM. Because the mag's just along for a ride. So instead of making the mag try to fire in a high pressure combustion environment, I just turn it off. Doesn't that load up the plug? Yep. Not a bit. Not because of, because of the combustion going on from the other ignition system. However, when I begin my descent, I put the mag back on. Should there ever be a problem with the electronic ignition system, I just add for redundancy so when I come back in the land. But it does save on the mag. That's just how I prefer to operate because I have to repair those things when they go bad. And so I try to make things last as long on the airplane as possible. Any new planes come with this? Do what? Do any of the new airplanes? Uh, no new airplanes are coming with that now, which is one of the questions that uh, Aviation Consumer asked of the industry is, why are not people installing these in airplanes, uh, especially the new aircraft, uh, because of the fuel savings? Yeah. So you start looking at, we're just going to say that fuel is $5 a gallon nationwide. So if you're saving in a 0360, like in a 172, uh, you're saving a gallon an hour. You don't have the mag inspections. Uh, let's say the unit costs $5,000 to install. Well, by the time you've operated the unit for 1,000 hours, it's paid for itself, and everything after that will be great. Uh, larger systems, like the six cylinders that are saving two gallons an hour, will recoup their money faster. Plus, your plugs won't be loaded up. Uh, we had a customer come in, 150 hours of flying last year on the 37 BYs, and when we pulled the ignition, all the plugs in the airplane were completely clean. They looked like they'd just come out of a beat blast. So I went like, are you, you know, we had another airplane in, 25 hour AA1B with a student pilot who wasn't leaning. We had carbonized plugs with lead and we had plugs that were perfectly clean, so we checked the gap. So one of the things that we do at Yankee Aviation, and like I said, we move all the plugs to the top. What we do is we put a placard on the firewall that says, Magneto fires top plugs, electronic ignition system fires bottom plugs, do not interchange or rotate. 
because they are different. A magneto cannot fire the 36,000 volts, and if the electronic ignition system gets up a massive 16,000 gap, it will destroy the plug. So to, to assist the owners with that, we normally, most of your magneto harnesses are silver braided, so we leave the plug silver. And now the wires are red, we paint the high energy plugs and paint them red. And we put them in there so your spark plug wires match your spark plug colors so you know where they go. So it's just a little tip from having people make, make a, you know, do a, because it'd be so easy, a lot of mechanics, the plugs look alike, and if you want to come up and see those two plugs, you look at them side by side, they're very hard to tell apart until you look at the gap. And it would be very easy for a guy to rotate all the plugs in the rack, put them back in, and now the airplane doesn't run at all, and they're trying to, they're scratching their head wide. So from the standpoint of wiring, the, the uh, electronic mag, which would be the white one, would no longer be wired to the mag switch at all then? You have a separate switch on and off the, you the have right a, mag, which becomes, becomes functionless. It's a dead switch then. And all yes. you have is you have off, you have left, you have nothing for right, and you have, you have start. Right, which is why Electroware has come up with, now there, you can still use your rotary switch if you want, but you have to add a carling or an MS switch to energize it, so that when you go to the right mag, and there is a special wire that goes back to the switch from the controller, but most people are going for the, uh, either the EIS or another switch solution, getting rid of the rotary switch. It gets rid of the AD for the Cessnas that have the key to start. Grumman's are, don't have that AD because we have a push button for start. So what we do, what we did at Ron's, we bought the uh, we bought the Electroware switch system, which contains two rocker switches, which will ground and unground the mag, which will supply the 12 volts to the controller, and then there's a push button for start. So what we do in Grumman's, we have a separate switch panel for the entire lower panel. So your master switch gets replaced, your push button goes, your jacks all. It's a complete metal panel instead of a plastic overlay. And we just put switch cards on the MS switches, the uh, MS35, 022, and 023 switch, uh, depending upon which, which of these system we're using. And you get to be like you're in a twin now with rocker switches for your, uh, for your magnetos and your ignition system. And then someone asked, I had one customer goes, what's to stop somebody from stealing my airplane? Now I don't have an ignition switch anymore. Once they get in the canopy, they've got the airplane. I said, they had the airplane anyway. All they had to do was open the cabin, cut the two grounding wires on the mags, get in and push the button, and it's going to start. He goes, I never knew that. <laughs> so, you know, you're really not making the airplane that much on uh, that much better. And the switches, again, take care of that AD, and they're easy to replace. More questions? Well, thanks for coming out so early in the morning. And if you, like I say, uh, check out the uh, YouTube channel, Grumman Pilot, and check out some of the videos. It talks about all the nuances of all the components. And, and so, if you, like I say, I have literature. If you want to have, come up and do one-on-one -on -one with uh, questions and answers, that's fine. Again, thank you for coming out to this talk, and thanks for supporting Lunkin Airport.